right, we're getting started with a all gray prime for this guy. And we're starting in my airbrush booth, which is basically a cardboard box. Don't worry, the only thing we're airbrushing is the uh, base coat here of whole red. Going to cover his entire body. So if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry about it. Just base coat the entire model minus the horns, um, his hair, and any sort of like cloth elements that are on him in whole red or a dark brown of some color. Um, I really like whole red because, well, first off, it is a brown with a red hue in it, which makes a very, very good shadow and base tone for red to sit on. But you could use a different brown. So then we have scarlet red. The important thing here is that red is one of the hardest colors to layer over other colors. So by starting with a brown, the red covers that really, really easily. But we're going to want to build up this red incredibly smooth. I wanted to work on this model to a very high standard. Much higher than what I normally do for tabletop miniatures. Um, what they usually call the three foot standard. Because you're probably going to see the model from three feet away. I wanted this model to look really, really good even up close. Um, by no means is this professional quality but I definitely wanted it to be a much higher quality than the three color standard or the three foot standard. So what I've done is I took the scarlet red, I watered it down to it was a smooth consistency and then I added some Vallejo glaze medium to it so that I could start glazing it on. That means that that scarlet red and now flat red are having about 10 layers before I get the color that I'm looking for and each time I'm covering slightly less of the area. I'm talking not even like a millimeter less like one tenth of a millimeter less um, area each time. I'm barely 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 doing less but the whole point is that I'm building up and building up and building up and getting more saturation with the tone. So you saw when I first started out it was barely any red now we have really nice scarlet red coverage and now the flat red is going on and that's bringing it up really bright and it already looks like that's where I normally stop with my miniatures. We're pretty much there already. So right here is where I normally would end it um, and then move on to the next element. But instead this time I'm grabbing clear orange and I mixed clear orange into the, the flat red and I'm doing the exact same thing. So this is going to be kind of the base of the highlight. So if you're thinking of them in different categories, we had the base of the of the low light or the shadows, which was the whole red followed by scarlet. We had the actual base tone or the mid tone, which is the flat red. That is the kind of the color that you're taking in and you're noticing that the that the model looks like. And now we have this clear orange coming through and really starting to brighten it up. But remember, I said it's the base of the highlight. So we're going to do another round of highlighting. Here we're using khaki on the model's horns, nails, and hooves. I think that they could also be done in black. You can make them look a really cool, glossy, shiny black. But I decided uh, because the model is so dark overall with the, the, the redness that um, bright white horns, teeth, hooves, all that kind of stuff would be nice. Agrax Earth Shade to shadow in all the bone. And if you have a favorite bone recipe, let me know down below. I've been using this khaki to um, ivory mixture. And let me know if you found something better that you like more. So here I am using khaki to re-highlight everything and sort of uh, cover up all the areas that shouldn't have been hit by the wash of Agrax Earthshade. So er basically everything that's not a shadow is getting re-hit with khaki. And then we're going to mix ivory into that khaki and come back and highlight um, the higher areas and then do a, um, I said ivory but I meant brain matter beige and those, I mean I, I own multiple ivories and colors that are sort of like that so I, they're all you do not have to follow this recipe 100%. Just get a color that kind of matches. So any sort of off-white color. 
So I'm using that off-white color mixed in with the khaki, then I'll come back and hit it again with just the off-white color, and then I will use some white to just sort of tip the horns and tip the nails and tip the hooves just to give them a really bright spot on there. And make sure that all of your paints are thinned down, even though you want those horns to have, um, have a, a texture to them, you don't want to do it with thick gloopy paint. That's not the kind of texture you're looking for. So here I reached out to a couple painters on Instagram and said, hey, am I done yet? And they said, no, you need to brighten up that that skin some more. You need uh, to push those highlights. And I thought, well, I'm going to both push the highlights and push the shadows. And they suggested using a flesh tone mixed into that red. So that red orange that I had, I then mixed the flesh tone in there and went back and hit all of these areas and brighten it up. Again, five, six coats of this. It's very thin. It has a glaze medium in it. None of it is being done quickly. And the final thing that I did is I took some Druki Eye Violet. This is also watered down. I didn't put any glaze medium, glaze medium in this. I just watered it down so that I could control it very easily. And all of the deep shadows, I added Druki Eye Violet. Now, when you'll, you'll see the model later on, you won't notice the purple in there at all. That's not the point. We don't want to paint it and make it look purple. What we want to do is really make those shadows stand out. And that is going to help make all of the highlights we made stand out. So now we're done with the skin, moving on to the fur. So using black on all the fur, he has a mane on the back of his head, he has big furry patches on his forearms, and then he has a little tuft at the end of his tail there. Now be very careful if you're going to do it this way, but dry brush some German gray across pretty much the whole, in the entire model's hair. So everywhere on his mane, on the forearms, and on the tail, you're going to get this um, German gray, which is a basically one step up from black. Now, this is where the highlight is coming in. So you're going to be much more selective about where you put it. I'm using Mechanicus Standard Gray to pick just on the top of the shoulders and on the front of the head. Um, and there's two separate highlights on the shoulders. There's one at the top of the shoulders, and then there's one at like the very the ridge where the horns are. And I'm using wolf gray and this is much lighter and a much smaller area. And one thing that I do do is you're gonna see it's gonna get too like kind of bright all over the place because now I use white and just hit just a little tiny bit of that. What I actually did afterwards is I went and I took um, some very watered down and and glazed up black and went back and sort of picked out a couple of the areas to put some more black in there. Umbral Umber from P3 is going to be the base coat for the clothing, which I'm going to do as just a basic brown cloth. Um, at this point I had spent more time on this model than I think I ever have on any other model and it was turning out great but I was also like my creativity for a single model was starting to dry up. So I got some Agrax Earthshade and hit that next. So that's why I didn't do any sort of design on the cloth or anything like that. I just figured nice brown would be fine. Using black to base coat all of the metal parts right now while we have uh, time with the Agrax drying. And then now flat brown, we're going to start highlighting up the brown cloth. So hit all your ridges, of course stay to the top and the things that are pointing up. You're not going to want to get that into any of the cracks and crevices that you've already put that Agrax Earthshade into. And then also be aware he's a very large gentleman that's standing over this thing so a lot of it's going to be in shadow so we're not going to brighten it too much in the front, we'll brighten it more in the back. So I start mix mixing ivory into the uh, light into the brown making a lighter and lighter brown keep it thin um, if you want 
you know, the, the nicest transition and put some glaze medium in there. If you're okay with the transitions being a little stark, don't worry about it. Just use water, but make sure it stays thin so that you have to take a couple coats to get it to where you want it. Now for the metal, I did lose some footage, so you're going to see it jump here at the end, basically um, from one highlight to just being finished. But what I did is I used hash nut copper and painted all of the metal pieces in because I thought that the copper would look really nice with his red skin and black hair. Then I used Agrax Earthshade to shade down the copper. Once the copper dries, I used gold. And I put gold as a highlight and kind of dry brush it on all of the metal. Then I used silver to dry brush the, the metal at the very tops just to make it a really, really nice edge highlight on there. Um, and then you could also put in some oxidation, which I did as well, and you'll be able to see in the picture. But I lost the footage of that one. Apologies, but hopefully you'll forgive me. Let's see how he turned out. I think he looks really freaking awesome. Probably the best skin I've ever done on a model. I think that the metal actually turned out really awesome as well. It was really easy to paint overall. It just took a lot of time. So let me know down in the comments below. Did you like this model? Did you like this way of painting him? What's the next model you want to see painted? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. New outro, I know. If you want to watch more in this series, click right here. If you would like to watch another video in a completely different series, click right here. And if you'd like an easy way to subscribe, other than clicking down below, even though it's right there and it says subscribe, you can click on this little picture right here. That also works.